Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to talk to you about Black Sonata. This is a solo hidden movement game designed by John Keane and published by Sideroom Games. Black Sonata actually had a previous life as a very successful print and play, but Sideroom Games has made a point of publishing a lot of interesting little solo PNPs, and Black Sonata is the first of that series. This is set during Shakespearean times, and your job is to find out the identity of the Dark Lady, who is a woman about whom Shakespeare wrote several sonnets, but whose actual identity is unknown. You will learn the Dark Lady's identity in the game by deducing where she is in London, confronting her, and then collecting clues every time you successfully do that. Each time you play the game, you're going to set aside one of the Dark Lady cards who will be your Dark Lady for the game. Then you'll use the symbols in the other cards you pick up to use your logic and powers of deduction to figure out what symbols are on hers and thus to identify her. So what makes Black Sonata so fascinating is that it's a combination between solo hidden movement, which I'd never heard of before before I heard of this game, and a logic puzzle. So let's talk about the hidden movement aspect first. Most of the action in the game is going to happen here on this board, where you have all these different locations in Shakespeare's London. So you're going to be coming here and tracking the Dark Lady's movements throughout this, this set of locations. So the way that that's done is actually ingenious. So you have this deck and there's actually several different routes you can set her on for replayability, but basically as long as you choose a column and put the cards in alphabetical order, that's your deck. Then you can use these symbols to trace where she's gone. So every location in this map has one or more symbols on it, but it's not gonna all be the same set. So what you're doing is you're looking at the different symbols that she's traveling to and then trying to gauge where she's going to go so you can meet her and search for her. So for example, we have this lovely beer mug. So we know the dark lady went for a drink. And the only two places in town to do that are here and here at East Cheap. So she's at one of these inns, the Boar's Head Inn or the George Inn. We don't know which one, so we use these markers to track that. Then we get to make a choice of where to move to try to catch her. Let's say that I just kind of want to move towards the center of the board, so I'll come here. So next, we're going to move this to the bottom of the pile. You can only go through this deck so many times before you lose the game, by the way. And now she's at a house symbol, so we can move the pieces to houses and we know that she's either coming this way or she's coming up around this way. So which, oh, the, the other option is here. But honestly, we know that she didn't do that. So we know that she's gonna be either here or here, just logically. So even though this has a house on it, if she can only move one, she could have come from this or this, she didn't just magically teleport across the board. So we can already eliminate that option. And that's how you start to kind of logic out where the dark lady might be. Now we have to make a choice. Do we want to come back here and hope this is where she might be going? Or do we want to make a move? She could come up here and completely skip us, or we can go here. So let's say that we're going to try to catch her over here and kind of gauge where she might be going. Then, oh my goodness, see these coins? So she could have come here. And that's really it because she couldn't have gone back this far. She would have had to backtrack twice, which is not possible in this particular scenario. And so you can use logic to figure out where she would have gone. So now that I think she's at Cornhill, I can, and I'm there because I've already moved there, I can choose to search for her. So the way that that's going to work is that you're gonna replace this card with a fog card. You can only search for the Dark Lady so many times in a game because if you search for her just willy-nilly, you run out of fog cards and you lose. So we've searched for her, but now we have to decide if we found her. And the way to do that is you take this card. I think she's at Cornhill. So I'm going to find the Cornhill location card. You put the cards on top of each other. See how this has a hole in it? This is the best part of this game to me. It's amazing. So you flip it. And oh my gosh, you see her through the keyhole. If she wasn't there, you wouldn't see her. But you see her, so you know she was in fact at Cornhill and you get to get a clue about her. This is so cool. So you also get like a little, you know, Shakespeare. Him have I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the hole and yet I am not free. Oh, Shakespeare. So then when you do catch the Dark Lady, you get something very important, which is a clue card. Let's say that this is the Dark Lady card that we drew at the beginning of the game. So she's sitting under the board and we don't know who she is. We have to draw a card at the top of the clue deck. And the way this is going to work is that you flip it 
And you get three symbols that tell you something about this particular potential dark lady. So the game uses actual historical figures that might have been associated with Shakespeare. And you find out how many symbols they have in common with cards of various suits. So we know that either zero or two of these symbols are going to be on this rose card. So we need to get the other rose card in order to be sure, but we use these clues in combination with other cards that we draw to use the process of elimination to figure out what symbols need to be the dark ladies, and then we confront her with them. The other thing that's kind of fun if you're into the theme of the game is that each of these has its own meaning. So this link means that the this particular figure, Winifred Burbage, has a documented link to Shakespeare. The little pen, well the plume, means that she's literary or creative. And we also have a rattle, and that means that she has children. So each of the symbols is not only just a symbol, but it gives you a little bit of a hint about the life of the woman that you are looking at when you draw the card. So the first really big appeal for this game is I never even heard of solo hidden movement or thought that it was possible until I found out about Black Sonata. I'm really impressed with the way that the Dark Lady moves around the board and with how many different pathways you can have her take so that you can never really memorize where she's going to be. You have to logic it out every time because there's so many different options that you can set her on. So even on the basic game where she only moves one space at a time, you have plenty of ways to reset the deck so that you're playing a different game each time. I think that's really exciting. And that's something that I'd never experienced in a solo game before. So for me, just the fact this game is so innovative in that way automatically makes it noteworthy for a solo player. I also really enjoy the logic puzzle that the clue cards present. I was really pleased, not only with the fun puzzle of trying to figure out what symbols are on the cards, but I liked the, that the symbols had an actual historical connection to the women who were depicted on those cards. You know, Black Sonata has an unusual theme. You're looking for a mysterious woman that Shakespeare wrote about in some of his sonnets. And I like that the game really commits to that theme. You can learn a lot about what people think about Shakespeare and women who potentially knew him, perhaps romantically, uh, from playing the game. And I really felt like I learned a lot and like it was immersive because I was really thinking about the mystery of like, who could this woman be? Who is the Dark Lady? My one criticism of or concern about this game, however, does have to do with those logic puzzles and with learning who the potential Dark Ladies are. Because the issue is this, if I play this game too many times in a row, I basically know who the Dark Lady is going to be because the cards are divided into suits. So it's like, oh, if it's not that Rose Dark Lady, then it's the other Rose Dark Lady. I already know what symbols are going to be on the card. And like, you can make yourself play the game so that you have proof, but the game gets a little bit less interesting when you're more likely to know who the Dark Lady is. So my recommendation for playing Black Sonata is that you absolutely should play it. It's fantastic, but it's one of those games that you're gonna burn out on. So you need to kind of put it aside, let it cool off, and then bring it back out again when you don't totally remember all the symbols anymore. So I definitely think that Black Sonata is a good game. It is absolutely worth playing solo if only to experience the solo hidden movement mechanic, but it's also just a great small box game with a small footprint, a fun puzzle, and it doesn't take up too much of your time. I do think that you have to be a little bit careful about how many times in a row you play it or else you risk too much familiarity with the Dark Ladies, but other than that, it's excellent. I absolutely give it an eight out of 10. It is a solo experience that I'm really glad that I've had, and I hope it's one that you are now curious about as well. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.